Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lee. In my previous video, I've shown you how you can use Cloudflare Tunnel to expose your local services to the internet. If you don't have your own domain, you might not be able to use Cloudflare Tunnel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you another tool and grog to do the same. Let's get started. First of all, let me open my browser. Go to my blog. I'm going to follow this blog post to show you all the features today. So let me just go to Ngrox website, go to login, and let's go back to here. I'm going to open my terminal and then go to my local virtual machine. As you can see, currently I don't have any containers running and there is no files in the home directory, okay? The first step we need to do is to create a Docker network called Angrog. Next, we are going to um, put the um, off token uh, to environment variable. Let me just copy this. All right, and then come back to Angrog, get the off token, copy, and that's it. Okay, then we can um, start our first ngrok container. Let me explain what this docker run command does. So at first it will put an environment variable ngrok of token, which is the same value as the one we just um, put in here. Then running this docker container on ngrok network with name ngrok. And then it will just use the ngrok alpine image running a HTTP tunnel um, to a services called Nginx on the Angros network at port 80. Okay, so let's just copy, come back here, and run this command. Okay, it's done. So let's come back to the Angros website, go to tunnels, agents. So you can see this is our first tunnel. Um, we can open this tab. It's not working because we don't have an Nginx service in the Angrot network, right? So let's start an Nginx service. All right, so let's refresh. As you can see, now we have the Nginx services running and exposed by the Angrot domain, right? Very simple. So the next feature I want to show you is um, running the tunnel from different entry points. Uh, if you have watched my Cloudflare video before, you can know that Cloudflare sets the um, um, entry point um, to the nearest location of your host machine. Angra does something similar. So in my case, I'm in Australia. So you can see the domain has .au here. Um, but Angra also allow you to define different uh, entry points for, um, for your needs. So um, for example, um, you can go to now the regions list and go to regions and then you can find all these locations. So in this example, I'm going to show you how you can set the entry point to JP. Okay, so let's come back here and we will just stop all the containers. All right, so we will run this command again. This is pretty similar to the previous one. Just adding the region flag here to JP. All right, let's come back here and do a refresh. No problem. So we can see now the domain is .jp. No problem. So if I um, run a Nginx container again and refresh, so our application is available from the Japan entry point, right? So if we refresh here, we can see the previous domain doesn't work anymore because uh, the tunnel uh, was terminated. Okay, so this is how you can use different locations as the entry point to your application. All right, so the next uh, function or features I want to show you is the TCP tunnel for SSH. So let me just stop my um, ngrok container. And so this is very useful when you need to expose your local VM to 
the internet temporarily, right? So let's say um, I need to go out for a couple of hours, but I also want to work something on my local VM. I can use this method to expose the VM temporarily. So I can access that. Um, so the command is very similar, but uh, you can see instead of HTTP, I'm using TCP here. And also this is the IP of your uh, network gateway IP. If you have watched my other videos before, you know that in order for the Docker container to access the host, um, they need to go, go through the gateway IP, so network gateway IP. So let's come back to here and then let's try to find the gateway IP. Docker network inspect and grok uh, network inspect. All right, so we can see the gateway IP is 172.23.0.1, right? So let's just copy here and change here to 23, right? And then come back to ngrok, do a refresh. We can see that now the tunnel is a TCP tunnel and then this is the domain and the ports we need to use. So let's come back to terminal, start a new um, window and then Let's go to SSH, the username, and then you can see the domain is the same. Port is different this time. So this time the port is 10032. If you don't have the SSH uh, private key, you can just like that. And then you'll be able to use the password to login if your server allows you to. Of course, we can also use a um, SSH uh, private key. Um, key. As you can see here, so I'm accessing my local VMs uh, via the Ngrok domain, right? Pretty straightforward. You can actually do the same with Cloudflare Tunnel, but um, the last time I checked it, it's not as straightforward as Ngrok. Okay, so let me just close this window and go back to my blog post and show you the next feature is to create a tunnel to serve the local directories. So let's say you've got some files you want to share with uh, with someone um, and you don't want to upload it to a drive or something. So you can use the Ngrok to do the same. So in this demo, I'm going to create a folder called IMG and then download a random picture from Unsplash and I need to stop my ngrok container. All right, so let's have a look what this um, what this does. So it looks similar, uh, instead of also mounting the local uh, IMG folder inside a container, and then um, HTTP tunnel with the file, and then to the IMG folder. All right, so let me do it. Now let's just come back here, do a refresh. Okay, we can see we've got an HTTPS, which is the HTTP tunnel again, instead of the TCP one, and forward to file. Okay, so let's go back here, click random. So you can see this is the random picture I just got um, from the Unsplash. Okay, all right, so these are all the features I want to show you, but as you can see, every time I need to uh, use a different function or feature, I have to stop my current um, agent and um, start a new container. The reason for that is that I'm using the free plan, which means I can only run one single agent process at a time. Is there any method you can run all three at the same time? There is one, which you need to use a uh, configuration files to start all the services at the same time. So let me just quickly stop ngrok and then create these configuration files. Um, ngrok.yaml. All right, so I'll just copy here. We need to change the off token. So go back here, off token. Um, so, all right, so um, also the SSH access, I need to change that to 23. All right, so let's go back here and then copy this command. So you can see I'm mounting this ngrok.yaml files inside the container at location slash etc slash ngrok.yaml and then tell ngrok where to find the configuration, right? And then when it starts, it need to start all tunnels at the same time, okay? Pretty straightforward, let's try it. 
and come back to agents. All right, so as you can see, we've got three tunnels running now, right? So if we go to that website and click random, you can see the same pictures showing here. And this is from AU and this is from JP because on the configuration files, I've got region JP, right? So yeah, and also the Nginx should work as well. So let's go there. Yeah, no problem. So this is how you can run three tunnels at the same time. Um, of course, Angra provides so many other features that you can use. Uh, for example, you can add the host headers and also do some basic authentications. Let's say you want to expose your application, but at the same time, you want someone to authenticate themselves before they can actually uh, access your uh, application. So to do that, we need to just put the basic off onto your um, config file. Um, I will put it under the Nginx service. So this is the username and then the password. All right, very secure. So um, stop the container and run again um, here. All right, so refresh. Let's go to Nginx now. You can see we need to enter a username and the password here, right? So this is how simple it is to add a basic off to your applications, okay? There is another function Angular provide out of box, which is the web inspection interface. Um, to enable it, it's very simple. Just add this one line to your configuration files. So let's do that. I'm going to change my region back to Australia. And then we need to stop the container and then start a container again. But um, this time, because you can see um, the web inspection interface is listening on 4040, I need to expose my host machine 4040 port to the same map to the same uh, listening port of the container, right? So uh, let's run this command. And to find the IP address of my VM, this is the one. So I just go to 192.168.3.22 and 4040. And I can see this web inspection uh, interface here. So you don't need to go here again. Um, you've got all the tunnel URLs here. So uh, we can also see the status page. We can see the tunnel URL which is this one for the file. So random.jpg, right? We can get it. We can also go to Nginx and authenticate ourselves. And this is the SSH SS one, right? So you can also inspect the traffic. So you can see I've just uh, went to this um, photo slash random.jpg, right? So you, you can see the information from here. So if I go to um, the Nginx one, and then demo, this is demo. Refresh several times. So we come back here, go to inspection. You can see um, like it goes to the root, which is Nginx. And then because it's the same request, it will be just 304. You can go back to the status page and see all the requests you have. I, I just sent and then to which tunnel, right? So I think in general, the web inspection interface is very useful if you need to um, see the status of all the uh, tunnels running. Um, and yeah, it's quite straightforward. Okay, so that's all I want to share with you today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try my best to get back to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.